What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 44. And before we get started, uh, let me go ahead and preach the gospel. Everybody's going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. This first death is just the body. Our soul doesn't die. But after judgment, we're either given eternal life or permanent death, death of body and soul, in a lake of fire. Repent and believe the gospel. And actually, before I even say that, God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life. None of us are perfect. We can't earn it. There's nothing we can do to justify ourselves before God. There's nothing we can do to earn eternal life. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human. Jesus is God, and we're going to see about God here in Isaiah chapter 44. There's a father and there's a son. And uh, here in Isaiah 44, it just mentions, it's, it's just God speaking. And I believe it's, uh, unless it's speaking, unless it's both of them, uh, I believe it would be the son because it's because of some of the uh, mentions of the first and the last and and uh, we'll get to it in a little bit but there's the father there's the son and then there's the spirit of God the son came 2,000 years ago born as a human lived a perfect life although he faced temptations like us lived a perfect life and although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment he didn't deserve to die that death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sins are taken away from us and we receive his perfection, his righteousness that he lived out. It's only through faith in Jesus that we can be saved and receive eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. It means to turn from your sins and turn to God. Follow Him. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you call out to Him to forgive you and rose three days later and you call out to Him to forgive you and save you, He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit which changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in the Bible and in many things. He will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. We know it's going to be with God, the Father and the Son, with the angels, and with all the rest of the people of God, in new glorified immortal bodies. Not these bodies that die, but new bodies that don't, in his kingdom, in paradise. And we can't even imagine what he has prepared. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into uh, Isaiah 44. And here in Isaiah 44, we're, as I mentioned a minute ago, we're going to see more about God, who he is, and and uh, his majesty. But we're also going to see about Cyrus. Here in chapter 44 and 45, we're going to see about Cyrus, the Persian king. And God prophesied through Isaiah a hundred years beforehand, before Cyrus is even born, that he was going to be king and that he would uh, restore Israel and help them rebuild the temple and uh, Jerusalem. So here we go with Isaiah 44. But now listen, O Jacob, my servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen, there's just a bird right next, these birds right next to my car making all kind of noise. Probably when I started. But now listen, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says Yahuwah, who made you and formed you and and I say this a lot so people are able to understand 
uh, when I say Yahuwah, it's the name of God, which is four letters Y H W H, which is in the Bible almost 7,000 times, but in English translations, it just says Lord or the Lord. But it's uh, God's name. And, uh, and also, Jesus isn't the name of the Son of God. Um, the letter J is only 400 years old. It's believed it was uh, Yeshua or Yah Yahushua was his actual name. But, uh, you know, most people know him by Jesus. And this is why I use the name Jesus so much. Thus says Yahuwah, the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Jeshurun is also speaking about Israel. We see Jeshurun in a couple scriptures. We, we see here in Deuteronomy 33. I'm going to start in verse 4. It says, Moses charged us, charged us with a law, a possession for the assembly of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun when the heads of the people were gathered, the tribes of Israel, together. Moses was in charge in Jeshurun, in Israel. And um, we see Jeshurun in another scripture or two, but that's the only one I'm going to go through. The word Jeshurun means... Uh, the Smith's Bible Dictionary says supremely happy. Um, from the root signifying to be blessed. And it can also mean upright. Or upright one. Thus says Yahuwah who made you and who formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, and Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. And this is also, Israel is also referring to us as believers in Jesus, as Christians. We are uh, grafted into the house of Israel. We're, we're considered to be Israel. God calls Israel his people. Although, uh, a lot of these scriptures are referring more specifically to Israel back then. Um, many of the prophecies are about us. And, this, and he's also referred to us as well. Him speaking to his people. For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your, on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. So this ha also has a past fulfillment and a future fulfillment. We know here in these last days, uh, the land of Israel is going to be made desolate. It's going to be made a wilderness, a desert. And water represents people, but it also represents his spirit, as we see right here. And it represents his spirit or also the word of God. And uh, he's going to restore after the tribulation time his people to the land, but also his spirit is going to be full of uh, all, all throughout the land and his word. For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground, and, and the land is going to be restored as well. So there's multiple meanings to this. For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And they will spring up among the grass, like poplars by streams of water. God refers to us as plants, or as grass. This one will say, I am Yahuwah's. And that one will call on the name of Jacob, or uh, uh, other translations say, uh, call himself by the name of Jacob, or Israel. And another will write on his hand, belonging to Yahuwah, belonging to the Lord. And will, and will name Israel's name with honor. See, a lot of people disrespect Israel and the name of Israel these days. And even all throughout time, really. 
but God is going to bring honor to the name of Israel. Thus says Yahuwah, the king of Israel and his redeemer, Yahuwah of armies. I am the first and I am the last and there is no God besides me. And unless I just have a misunderstanding on the relationship, like who God is with the Father and the Son, I, I don't, I mean, maybe I do, but uh, we read here in Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to go through a couple scriptures. Uh, verse 17 says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. And the living one. And I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever, forevermore. And so that wasn't the father that was dead. That was the son. The first and the last. And we also read here. One second. Revelation 2, verse 8. And to the angel of the church, of Smyrna, church in Smyrna write, The first and the last who is dead and who has come to life says this. And we know God is one. So I believe here in Isaiah 44 it's more specifically... Um, You know, I don't want to. I don't. I don't, don't want to speak falsely on it. I was going to say I, I feel, that seems like more specifically the Son, who is God. But uh, well, we read here in Revelation twenty-two, verse thirteen: "I am the Alpha and, and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end." Thus says Yahuwah, Yahuwah, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, and Israel's Redeemer. I mean, you could look at this two different ways. You could look at, look at this like it's saying, and Israel's Redeemer. Thus says Yahuwah, the King of Israel, and Israel's Redeemer, Yahuwah of armies. Or you can look at this as it's speaking about both the Father and the Son. Thus says Yahuwah, the King of Israel, the Son. And his redeemer, Yahuwah of armies. I'm not sure. I am the first and I am the last and there is no God besides me. Who is like me? Let him proclaim and declare it. Yes, let him recount it to me in order. From the time that I established the ancient nation. And let them declare to them the things that are coming and the events that are going to take place. And I, the ancient nation, I do believe this is, I do believe this is speaking about Israel here. And we're going to see in the next verse why. It says, who is like me? Let him proclaim and declare it. Yes, let him recount to me in order. From the time that I established the ancient nation. And let them declare to them the things that are coming and the events that are going to take place. Do not be tremble. I mean, do not tremble and do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? And you were my witnesses, speaking to Israel. Is there any God besides me or is there any other rock? I know of none. And so he says, you were my witnesses. And in the previous verse it said, um, And let them declare the things that are coming from the time that I established the ancient nation. And let them declare the things that are coming. And then he says, You are my witnesses. Have I, have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me or... And let me just read through the two scriptures one more time. 
the two verses one more time. Who is like me? Let him proclaim and declare it. Yes, let him recount it to me in order from the time that I established the ancient nation and let them declare to them the things that are coming. Let the ancient nation declare the things that are coming and the events that are going to take place. Do not tremble and do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? And you are my witnesses, the ancient nation, Israel. Is there any God besides me? Or any other rock? I know of none. He chose Israel to make his name known, make him to make him known and his ways known to the people, to, to the other nations. Those who fashion a gra graven image, speaking about the other nations, those who fashion a graven image are all of them futile, and their precious things are of no profit. Even their own witnesses fail to see and know, so that they will be put to shame. Who has fashioned a god or cast an idol to no profit? Behold, all his companions will be put to shame, for the craftsmen themselves are mere men. Let them all assemble themselves. Let them stand up. Let them tremble. Let them, let them together be put to shame. The man shapes iron into a cutting tool and does his work over the coals, fashioning it with hammers and working it with a strong arm. He also gets hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and becomes weary. Another shapes wood. He extends a measuring line. He outlines it with red chalk. He works it with planes and outlines it with a compass and makes it like the form of a man, like the beauty of man, so that it may sit in a house. Surely it cuts cedars for, for surely he cuts cedars for himself and takes a cypress or an oak and raises it for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a fir and the rain makes it grow. Then it becomes something for a man to burn. So he takes one of them and warms himself. He also makes a fire to bake, to bake bread. He also makes, makes a god and worships it. He makes it a graven image and falls down before it. Half of it he burns in the fire. Over this half he eats meat as he roasts, roasts a roast and is satisfied. He also warms himself and says, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. But the rest of it he makes into a god, his graven image. He falls down before it and worships. He also prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. They do not know, nor do they understand. For he is smeared over their eyes so that they cannot see. And their hearts... So they cannot under, so they cannot comprehend. And um, you know there was a there was a meme online, and it showed uh, someone carrying away a, a statue, like an idol, like one of these gods, out of the house when there's a flood, and it said that that awkward moment when you have to save your save your own God because it can't save itself you know and it just just made me think of that uh, the scripture the way we're going through it you know uh, what we're going through right now and God is just making making it clear making himself known I am God I am the living God these other nations they worship wood and stone and metal they worship idols but I am the one who created all things And he chose Israel to carry out that message to the nations. They do not know, nor do they understand. For he is smeared over their eyes, so that they cannot see, and their hearts, so they cannot comprehend. No one recalls, nor is there knowledge or understanding to say, I have burned half of it in the fire, and have also baked bread over its coals. I roast meat and eat it, then I make the rest of it into an, an abomination. I fall down before a block of wood. He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver himself, 
nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these things, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have wiped out your transgressions like a thick cloud, hallelujah, and your sins like a heavy mist, or the footnote here says, or cloud. And and it's, you know, it's just interesting because Jesus, he's coming on the clouds. When he comes, it says he comes in the thick clouds. I have wiped out your transgressions like a thick cloud and your sins like a heavy mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Hallelujah. Shout for joy, O heavens, for Yahuwah has done it. Shout joyfully, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into a shout of joy, you mountains or kingdoms. Mountains rep represent kingdoms. O forest and every tree in it, and a forest uh, represents either a nation or the world. The trees, either the nations or the people, depending on context. Break forth into a shout of joy, you mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. For Yahuwah has redeemed Jacob, and in Israel he shows forth his glory. Hallelujah. Thus says Yahuwah, your Redeemer. And the one who formed you from the womb. I, Yahuwah, am the maker of all things. Hallelujah. Stretching out the heavens by myself. And Psalm 33 says, By the, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Or, uh, I'm not sure if that scripture specifically says it's stretched out. But um, Jesus is the word of the Lord. I, Yahuwah, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone. And it was the Father and the Son who created, or the Father sent the Son to create. Causing the omens of the boasters to fall, making fools out of diviners, causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. The Bible says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. In other words, so-called knowledge, so-called science, and there's so much that this, this world believes is such knowledge and such understanding when it's actually foolishness it's actually a lot of lies a lot of it is not true it's just uh, people being you know people repeating what what others have said is true what others have said is knowledge people just being indoctrinated basically and thinking they're knowledgeable because they learned what someone else taught which isn't necessarily truth Stuff there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's called science that isn't actually science. Science is re observable and testable. And there's a lot that isn't observable and testable that is called science and fact when it's not. Causing the omens of, of boasters to fall or to fail. Making fools out of diviners. Causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. Confir confirming the word of his servant and performing the purpose of his messengers. It is I who says of Jerusalem, shall be, she shall be inhabited. And, all, and of the cities of Judah, they shall be built. And I will raise, raise up her ruins again. And speaking about, I mean, there's two fulfillments of this. Uh, there's a end time, or I mean, there's an end time fulfillment of everything being re rebuilt. But there's this past fulfillment, which is, uh, I mean, I guess the main fulfillment 
in regards to who we're speaking about here in a second with Cyrus is uh, after the Babylonian destruction of the Babylon, what Babylon did to Jerusalem. It is I who says of Jerusalem, she shall be inhabited. And of the cities of Judah, they shall be built. And I will raise up her ruins again. It is I who says to the depth of the sea, be dried up. And I will make your rivers run dry. And, uh, you know, well, water represents people. And, uh, but the Bible said, also says in, um, there will be, there will be no more sea, uh, during the millennial reign here in these last days, there will be no more sea. He's going to destroy the world with fire and water is going to be dried up. It is I who says to the depth of the sea, be dried up and I will make your rivers dry. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. And he will perform all my desire. And my, my nose only itches when I do videos. I, I don't know if it's spiritual attacks or, or what. My, I literally never rub my nose the way I rub it sometimes in the videos. Uh, when I'm not doing videos, it's crazy. A lot of the time, I'll notice it like right when I start a video, my nose will just start itching. It is I who says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and He will perform all my desire. And this is, uh, we're going to read a little bit more about Cyrus here in a second. Cyrus, the king of the Persians. And this was a hundred years before he reigned. This is I, it is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he will perform all my desire. And he declares of Jerusalem, she will be built. And of the temple, your foundation will be laid. And we know that uh, God used Cyrus to uh, help rebuild Jerusalem and the, and the temple. And uh, so, let's see. We're just going to read here a little bit about Cyrus. And then the next chapter, at least the beginning of the chapter, is also about Cyrus. And Lord willing, I'll record that today as well. Cyrus the Great, also called Cyrus II, born 590 to 580 BC. Born 590 to 580 BC, and uh, I'm gonna just uh, pull up in this timeline again here. Isaiah, let's hold on one second. Let me find Isaiah in here. Five ninety BC, Isaiah was from seven sixty to six six seventy three. Cyrus the Great, also called Cyrus the Second, born five ninety to five eighty BC, uh, in Medea, now Iran, a uh, conqueror who founded the Ar Archim Archimedean. Empire centered on Persia and comprising near the Near East and Aegean Sea. He is also re remembered in the Cyrus legend, first recorded by Xenophon, Xenophon, Greek soldier and author. In the Bible, he is the liberator of the Jews who were captive in Babylonia. And let's see.
trying to find it's not too much on here or it's not arranged too well here on as I was on Brit Britannica I'm gonna just read a little bit of what's what it says here on on Wikipedia off uh, the page that says Cyrus the Great in the Bible Cyrus the Great 600 or 576 to 530 BC figures in the Hebrew Bible as a patron and deliverer of the Jews. He's mentioned 23 times by name and alluded to several times more. Um, Reconstruction of Jerusalem by Cyrus, Darius, and Xerxes. So all three, Cyrus, Darius, and Xerxes, gave orders to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And Daniel prophesied that from the declaration to restore and rebuild Jerusalem there will be a certain amount of time until the Messiah comes and it was actually from the decree of Xerxes Artaxerxes that uh, that it led up right to the day when, Je when Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem and was proclaimed as as, uh, as king they were proclaiming him as king it says according to the Bible Cyrus the great king of the Arkham Archimedes Empire it was a it was a Persian Empire it used to be Medo-Persia and then it became the Persian Empire and he was the king of the Persians he's one of the most powerful kings in history um, it's just it's hard to find a it just seems to be hard to find a little a, a good little description of him on here for some reason uh, let's see if there's anything else Let's see if I can pull up something else. Cyrus the Great was the founder of the Ar Archimedean Empire. His empire stretched from the Aegean Sea to the Indus River. It was the largest that ever existed at, at the time of his rule. Cyrus pierced his kingdom together using a mixture of conquest and di diplomacy, attesting to his skills as a warrior and a statesman. His reputation as great was probably enhanced by the extent to which his figure was mythologized. Um, all right, I'll just stop it there. Uh, you can do some research into Cyrus if you want. But, uh, he was prophesied about like a hundred years before he came upon the scene and and God called him by name and said, I am gonna, I am gonna make you who you are. I am gonna clear the way for you. And we're gonna see this more in the next chapter. I'm gonna clear the way for you. I'm, I'm going to, uh, conquer these kingdoms for you and, you and you will you will reign and then you will help me bring back uh, restore uh, Jerusalem bring back my people and let me just do a word search real quick I'm going to read this out of So we read about Cyrus and Ezra and 2nd Chronicles and So I'm going to read a little bit out of Second Chronicles 36 real quick. And maybe out of, a little out of Ezra. We'll see. Let's see. I'm going to just read, I guess, from verse 22 in Second Chronicles 36. It says... Now in the first year of Cyrus, Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fill the word of the word of Yahuwah, spoken by the word of Jer, mouth of Jeremiah, Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, 
So he sent a proclamation throughout his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahuwah, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may Yahuwah, his God, be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem to re rebuild it. Then, let me just see what's in Ezra real quick. This may be the same, same proclamation or some or similar. Yeah, it looks like it's the same thing. I'm gonna just read from the beginning of the chapter, Ezra chapter one. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of Yahuwah by the mouth of Jeremiah, Yahuwah stirred up the, the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. So he sent a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, "Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahuwah, the God of king." The God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of, his, of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of Yahuwah, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. Every sur survivor at whatever place he, he may live, let the men of that place support him with silver and gold and goods and cattle together with a free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And I'll just stop it right there. But there's a little bit more said about per about Cyrus. And like I said, we're also going to read about Cyrus in the next chapter, in chapter 45 of Isaiah. So that's the end of chapter 44, Isaiah 44. And uh, praise God. Let's endure to the end, brothers and sisters. Let's uh, walk in all the ways of God. Let's serve Him with all our heart. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. There's not much time left. We need to do His will in everything. We need to be humble. We need to overcome. We need to resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's uh, be ready for the return of the Lord. Let's preach the gospel. Let's stay in the word. Stay in prayer. Let's... Uh, shine his light by living his word out and by speaking his word and show his love in everything we do let's do his will in all things and if you don't have a relationship with jesus christ i preached the gospel in the beginning don't waste your opportunity eternal life is what god is offering you you just got to be willing to turn to jesus accept his free gift of salvation ask him to forgive you repent and believe the gospel Give your life to Jesus Christ. There's not much time left. That's the end of uh, Isaiah 30, 44. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.